The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's technical webinar. My name is Milad, and I am a numerical simulation engineer at LaunchTech, partner of DASO Systems in the Middle East region. With me today is Hassan, a Simulia Industry Process Consultant in DASO Systems France, specializing in CST Studio Suite and computational electromagnetics. Feel free to drop any questions in the chat box anytime through the presentation. We'd love to hear from you anytime. Please note that this uh, webinar is recorded and the recorded version will be sent to you and will be made available afterwards. Okay. So based in the UAE, LaunchTech is an engineering company that specializes in mechanical engineering and advanced finite element uh, modeling and vertical applications. We have a strong partnership with DASA Systems that allows LaunchTech to become the official distributor of all Simulia products in the Middle East, as well as being a development and service partner as we deliver official trainings and being a certification center. So our services include uh, next slide. Uh, official, uh, our services include distribution of the software as well as technical consultancy, which we provide support to our customers. And we also offer software technical trainings. And lastly, certifications based on an official exam. Now, this all applies to the Simulia portfolio, which I'll show in the next slide. Uh, now, the Simulia offers an advanced simulation product portfolio. It covers simulation disciplines such as structural mechanics, computational fluid uh, dynamics, and electromagnetic field simulations. This all starts with Abacus, uh, iSight, the Tosca, iSight and Tosca both being for optimization, FE Safe for fatigue simulations, SIMPAC for articulated systems, EXA and XFlow for CFD analysis, and lastly, CST Studio Suite, which is the main focus of today's session. Uh, moving on, uh, in support of business continuity and stay at home mandates, we encourage all DASA Systems product users to use the online web based training. Uh, now, this is a web based learning database, uh, and it's called the 3DS Learning Space Access. For a limited time, we're running a promotion that includes all training courses, which is an extensive variety of topics for an unbelievable price per user. Uh, this provides access to users for three months for all trainings of Simulia. Now, some of the topics covered can be within the CST Studio Suite, like an introduction to CST, which is more than 10 hour training and it can be crash worthiness analysis for crash tests of cars, additive manufacturing, abacus, extreme deformations, composites, vibrations, fitness for service. So it's, it's really not uh, an industry dependent and it covers all industries. And with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Hassan to begin the technical session using CST CD Suite. All right. Uh, hello again, guys. Uh, so my name is Hassan, uh, and I work with the SO system as an industry process consultant, uh, and I focus mainly on the areas of uh, Africa and Middle East, and I do a little bit of technical support also for France. Uh, so today I'm going to try to show you uh, what is the, this power we are talking about in CST. Uh, I'm going to show you also the new features that uh, appeared in the recent two years. That means CST 2019 and CST 2020. But the novelty in this presentation that I'm going to show to um, that I'm going to show today is I'm going to show you how these feature and how we apply them to real life scenarios and the real life application. So like this, you will see the features and the application that we can cover with CST. Uh, and if we still have some time left at the end, I will try to do a quick demonstration if everything works uh, perfectly. So let's see about that later. Okay. Uh, in order to answer a question, uh, the question, the first question that we have to answer is the following. How are product design and new feature development related? And how does the product design rely on the development of the new feature for CST Studio Suite? 
Now, uh, as you can imagine nowadays, uh, when we talk about the product development, we are not only talking about developing the antenna or developing, I don't know, the matching network or anything like that. Now we are talking about IPEs, and IPEs are the, the stands for industry process experience. And what is an industry process experience? This is actually uh, something that deals with all the stages of a development of a product, which means uh, from uh, describing, uh, for example, the, the specification, and then until the, pro uh, the producing the device and testing the device and see if it works correctly. So we're gonna see uh, different uh, industry process experience in this presentation and throughout these uh, IPEs, I'm gonna show you the features of CST. So the first one we're gonna talk about is called the Integrated Antenna Engineering and Certification. And here we are dealing about the industry uh, of high tech, okay? So assuming uh, that some company uh, wants to design a device, for example, uh, I don't know, a connected uh, smart uh, music player or like the, what you can see here on the screen is a connected video projector, okay? You have to deal with a lot of stuff. But the main focus that you're gonna see here, uh, our main focus of, uh, of, uh, of interest is uh, the communication. So we're gonna speak a lot about antennas, but a little bit more than antennas. For example, if you take into consideration uh, this, uh, this device, as I told you, the, the video projector, you have to ask your question, what should the shape of uh, the size of the antenna be? Okay, because we have to see what is the shape and what, how, how the antenna will be operating and where can you place the antenna inside the device? And then will the antenna work correctly with the other system and components inside the device? And then will the antenna work correctly when the device is placed in a realistic environment? So these questions, they are all important because when you start, for example, with simulation, uh, if someone asks you, uh, yeah, you have to, to design an antenna, what you will do is that, okay, you will optimize your antenna in free space. So this is a little bit, yeah, you're halfway before getting your objectives. In order to complete your objective of design, you have to place your antenna inside the device and then see how the antenna will be performing or not. So anyways, uh, in this slide, uh, I am showing you the steps of how to design and, uh, you know, optimize an antenna. Uh, so basically, uh, you have to integrate your antenna design inside your device. Then, assuming that, for example, your antenna is working with other antennas, for example, let's take the, uh, the simplest example, the mobile phone. Inside your mobile phone, you have several antennas for several applications. You have the Wi-Fi, you have the Bluetooth, you have the GSM, LTE, 4G. I mean, these are a lot of uh, transceiver system that also you would like to take them into consideration. For example, there is something in CST called uh, cosite interference, and this will allow you to study the interference, the electromagnetic interference between those systems. So what you will get as a KPI is what you see here in small. Uh, this is what we call the violation matrix. The, viola ma the violation matrix will show you actually which system uh, interferes with which system. And whatever you have red dots like this, it means you have a lot of interference. And whatever you have uh, yellow, it means that the interference is not high enough. And whatever is green, it means that your system is operating perfectly. And another KPI, for example, when developing a, uh, a, mo a device such as a mobile, fine, uh, mobile phone, sorry, it's the SAR, uh, the specific, uh, specific absorption rate. You know, nowadays when you buy an, a, a new mobile phone, for example, you can see something on the box called SAR, uh, uh, which is actually, I think the, the standards now are at two uh, watts per kilogram. So basically it's the ability of a human body or a mass of a human body to absorb the power. Uh, you can see also, of course, uh, in, in, uh, in high tech industry, some other related processes like uh, electromagnetic com uh, compatibility. For example, imagine that you have your phone placed, uh, I don't know, inside uh, an area of high, high field. You will have to see how your mobile phone will behave. And of course, you have to study the motherboard of the phone. And when I speak about motherboard, we are speaking about PCB uh, simulation, where you can get some signal integrity result and some eye diagram, as you can see on this, uh, this picture here. 
So now we have, uh, I have to replace some words about our uh, software that is called Antenna Magus. So Antenna Magus is a different module from CST, okay? But what is Antenna Magus? Antenna Magus actually helps you with the choosing the antenna. So as I told you before, if you want to place an antenna inside your device, you have to see about the size, about the shape, and especially about the specification of the antenna. So in Antenna Magus, what you can do is, you can go inside, you tell Antenna Magus, okay, I want an antenna that operates for GSM and Wi-Fi bands, for example. And then you can choose the type, for example, in this uh, kind of, uh, of devices, the planner antenna seems to be the best choice. So this is what you do in Antenna Magus. You choose your type of antenna, you choose the specification, and Magus gives you a design, an already made uh, antenna that you can import in CST and then you, you can simulate it with CST. Uh, so here uh, you can see a lot of types and then you have to simulate those antennas inside your device to see how they operate. Now your antenna could be uh, naturally matched. You know, you have to match your antenna in order to make the power goes through it and be radiated. But what if when you place your antenna inside the device, the antenna is not matched? What you can do is that you can insert a matching network. You know, you can place some resistance, you can place some capacitance, some inductors in order to match the antenna. Now speaking about matching, one feature of CST 2020 is the multi-pin lumped element. So what you can do, is that you can place this multi-pin lumped element directly inside the 3D design, as you can see here. And since a multi-pin, a multi-pin, it has, for example, this. Uh, in this uh, case here, we are dealing with a transistor which has three pads, and this is what we have done here. So, in in instead of running the simulation in 3D and then going into Design Studio and place some schematics, some circuits, etc., you can place directly the touchstone. Uh, file with multiple uh, pins inside the 3D uh, simulation directly. All right. Uh, another features uh, another feature of CST 2020 is actually um, the um, a transform until touch. So what is this? Imagine I have a small video that I'm going to show you here. So this is also can deal with the, uh, you know, with the placing antennas inside devices. Imagine that you want to move this brick here, which is blue, until it touches the, the sphere. So basically when you import some elements from the outside, you cannot easily, let's say, uh, perform this operation. However, now in CST, we have this transform to touch, as you can see here. Oops, sorry, I went a little bit quickly. So when you apply this transform to touch in this option, what happens is that the brick is going to be translated until it touches the object, which is the sphere. And then when you change the position of the sphere, the position of the brick will change accordingly, as you can see here. This is really important, for example, uh, when, you place, uh, when you want to place an antenna or any other devices inside an environment or uh, if you want for, to simulate a, a mobile phone next to a human uh, head, for example, uh, what you can do is uh, perform this operation called uh, translate to touch or rotate until touch, and then you can do whatever you want with, uh, with the simulation. You can animate it, you can run a parametric simulation, you have no problem. Okay, speaking about mobile phones, uh, as I told you in the beginning, you have to consider your PCB uh, cards. And uh, nowadays, a lot of, uh, of the devices or the mobile phone or the connected uh, objects, uh, they are a little bit, you know, uh, they tend to be smaller or they can have uh, specific shapes. So this is why we have introduced these features in CST, which exists since some time, uh, called the cylindrical band. So imagine you have this uh, PCB right here. If you can, you can perform a cylindrical bend on all the layers of your PCB until you get something like that. But now the new features in CST 2020 is the bending in multiple directions. So you can see here that under the, uh, I have a small video of course, uh, under my PCB, you have some uh, object which is not uh, cylindrical. So what you can do is uh, there's an operation called uh, bend uh, multi-layers, and then you can bend these multi-layers on the different sides of this object. 
until you get something like this picture here to the right. Okay. And finally, we can read the bending information directly from uh, PCB design tools like Cadence Allegro, for example. For the moment, we have uh, the EDA import from Cadence Allegro. And inside Cadence Allegro, you can um, input some uh, bending options and they can be directly read by CST and performed, as you can see in this scenario here. Okay. In this video, I'm going to fly um, uh, on it directly just to show you because for those who are users of CST, I'm not sure or I don't know if all of you know uh, the connection between CST and the, the most famous product of the SOS system, which is the 3D experience. Uh, in a nutshell, what is a 3D experience platform? It's the platform where you can uh, manage your project from A to Z. You can collaborate with other uh, with other uh, engineers from your company or from other engineers from outside your company. I mean, it's a very, very big platform where you can uh, do uh, everything. So in this scenario, in this video here, I'm going to show you how can uh, someone, you know, you can go on the platform, you can search for a specific product. For example, here you can see a lot of product uh, changing the style, the connectivity. And you can open the product inside the platform where you can see its design. And this product, for example, you can see if this is the product that you were uh, searching for. And if it's not it, you can search for another product. And then what is good is that you can, in CST, you can connect directly to this platform and you can import the product that you want to simulate. All right. You can simulate it on your own machine. And once you have finished the, uh, the simulation of the device, you can upload the device back to the platform along with the results. Like this, what you can do, your colleague, for example, who deals with, I don't know, thermal simulation. Once you have set up and optimized your electromagnetic scenario, you can upload the results. And then your colleague, for example, from the thermal uh, team or from the mechanical team can perform other simulation on his own laptop and then he can upload the results, the results sorry, back again to the, um, to, the, uh, to the platform. And finally, once the device is optimized, uh, I mean, we've taken into consideration all scenarios, thermal, uh, mechanical, et cetera, the manager, for example, or the project manager can see the results and he can validate if, the, if your results are good or not. And especially if you want to take an example uh, where the 3D experience, uh, one of the example where the 3D experience pl uh, platform is really important is our action, uh, what's happening right now, you know, with the, with the COVID uh, and this sanitarian crisis that we have right now, you can continue to collaborate together via the platform. So this is really powerful. And if I have some time by the end, I'm going to show you how, to, how this works. But you can see already now on this video that I've shown, and of course, you're going to see it in the recording if the, uh, the bandwidth of the internet is not quite good to see the video smoothly. You can see it again once it's recorded. But this is really something uh, uh, important. Okay, now speaking, uh, we are still in the high tech industry and we are still speaking about the new features. Now, if you are designing uh, everything, I mean, if you are designing the antenna, you are designing the device, everything is done inside your company, there might be no problem. However, imagine if your company designs the antenna, but you have to communicate the antenna result to another company which uh, study the device, which integrates the antenna. You see, here we have two cases scenario. You have one company with the antenna engineer, and another completely different company with the antenna integrator. So what you can do, uh, oh, I mean, if imagine that you want to pass the, the results of your antenna to the, to the company with the antenna integrator, but you do not want that uh, the integrator sees how your antenna is designed. Imagine that you want to keep this uh, intellectual property to yourself. There is a feature in CST called encrypted models and they operate with a time domain and a frequency domain. So what is the encrypted model? Actually, you can simulate your antenna and what you will give to the antenna integrator is, is a file, is a CST file, huh? is a normal CST file, but when you open it, you will see only this orange brick. So the company that receives your antenna, it, they can see nothing. However, they can still simulate it with CST. 
because the integrator they it will he will take your antenna and he will place it inside the device but what he will place inside the device is this orange brick it will not place your antenna okay and this orange brick can be simulated with cst so this is really important and i think that cst is the only uh, software that can provide this uh, functionality until now so this is really important okay uh now the cst is not about time domain and frequency domain of course we have a set of a lot of solvers you can see them here from the frequency domain until the asymptotic solver that i'm gonna say some words uh, later on uh so uh we have received uh, a lot of question asking uh for example yeah i i want to simulate this kind of antenna what solvers uh, what solver sorry gives me the best result so the answer to this question is all the solver gives the good results because in all solver we are solving theoretical equations which are Maxwell equations. So all the solvers give the good results. However, some solver are best suited to run some kind of simulation because, you know, in order uh, of in a, in a matter of uh, a power uh, computer requirement or uh, as a matter of simulation time. Just to give you a bit of an example. Uh, imagine that you have a wide a very very wide band antenna so what we, what can i tell you is that the time domain solver so this is the transient solver is the solver to run uh, wide band uh, devices why because when we are speaking a very wide band in frequency you are speaking a very short pulse in time domain this means that this is the time domain that gives the the shortest pulse and then it gives the um, you know the quickest simulation so anyways, I'm gonna show you a little bit more uh, in the next slide. Now, if I go to the frequency domain solver, uh, what are the interests or what are the benefits from the frequency domain solver? Well, it's a push button solution. You know, you just import your design, you click on simulate and CST will perform, you know, the meshing. It will perform the adaptive mesh. It has the high order elements. Uh, the high order elements means that, uh, you know, for all those who use frequency domain, uh, in this uh, solver, we uh, we mesh tetrahedrically, so we, we we have a lot of tetrahedrons inside our structure, and we have the high order tetrahedrons, which are curved elements. So there you are. You have the curved mesh. You have the uh, solver. You have two types of solver inside the frequency domain. You have the general purpose solver, and you have the model order reduction technique. Uh, this is specially um, used when you have some uh, filters devices. Uh, you know, in uh, what the model order reduction uh, does is the reduction of the calculation matrix. You know, it can remove the elements that are a little bit unnecessary to the simulation just to uh, improve the simulation time. Uh, there isn't some a very important feature called the moving mesh. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it in the next slide. And now uh, the new features inside CST now is that we have the tetrahedral mesh refinement and the simultaneous excitation. So I'm going to show you a little bit about those. So what is the moving mesh technique? This is also a feature that's only available with CST. I personally do not know any other software that can provide this uh, functionality. So what is it? Imagine that you have this antenna and you want to uh, optimize the distance between these two uh, arms. You can see here where we have the, uh, the, the blue arrows. The moving mesh allows you to change geometrical uh, property of the device. For example, here we can change the distance between or the gap between those two elements. However, we do not remesh every step. We do not perform the meshing again. So what we are doing here is that we are compressing the mesh in order to keep the same number of mesh. Now, what's the, uh, the objective of doing this is uh, the objective is to remove all the uh, what we call the mesh noise because if you have some certain mesh and then you change the mesh after a geometrical change you can add some uh, mesh noise to the simulation it's a numerical noise however when you perform the simulation while keeping the same mesh here you can get rid of this mesh noise and you can actually get a lot faster to your uh, results, uh, especially if you are doing an optimization, if you are doing a parameter sweep of your uh, of your device. Okay, uh, we uh, as I told you, you can also have the tet mesh metallic edge refinement. You can see this is the old software with uh, the the old meshing with CST, where you can see that the edges are not well refined, and you can see here the default mesh 
uh, where you have an edge refinement on the edges. Uh, for those who are specialized in antennas, you can know that in your planner devices like this here, uh, the field is mainly concentrated on the edges of your devices. And this is why the mesh refinement of the edge is very important. And you can increase the accuracy very easily with this. Okay, uh, another product of CST is called the filter designer. So uh, the 2D, the filter designer 2D actually is a product that will allow you to optimize filters really quickly, like really, really quickly. And it deals only with 2D planner for, uh, filters. So basically you, can, you have here, uh, the example I'm showing here is the hairpin filter, but it can also operate on the bow tie filter on any type of uh, 2D planner filters. So what you can do here is that you can run the optimization with this uh, tool called the Filter Designer 2D. And then of course you can export the 3D model to CST as you can see in here. Because when you are speaking about modeling a filter, once again, you, can, you, you do not just design the filter in free space. You have to consider maybe packaging because uh, nowadays, as you can know, the uh, high frequency filters, they mainly come packaged inside metallic structure. And when you want to consider this metallic structure, you have to consider the 3D design of your filter. So as we have filter design 2D, we have the filter design 3D, but this time is the, filter, the filters that we are designing are 3D, so they are cavity filters. And the feature that we have in CST 2019 and 2020 now is that you can actually optimize your filter directly, uh, I mean, when, when you can directly uh, connect CST to your vector, uh, vector network analyzer. So what, you, what we can see here, you have this design filter here, and this is connected to the VNA, sorry, and then the VNA is connected to your computer where you can run uh, Filter Designer 3D. And while you tune your filter here, the real fabricated filter, you can see how the matrix, the coupling matrix of this filter is displayed inside Filter Designer. So this is really powerful if you want to understand how your filter is operating and how you can tune your filter because this tool helps you to tune your filter in no time. So some other new filter, uh, features of Filter Designer, you have the lossy instruction, you can calculate the unloaded factor quality, you can calculate the adaptive return loss, and also you can compare uh, two matrix of coupling, for example. You see, you, for example, if you have simulated your filter, it has its own uh, coupling matrix. You can compare this matrix to another one, and then, you know, in order to optimize or uh, anything uh, related. Okay, so another feature inside the uh, frequency domain solver and the time domain solver is the lumped element touchstone and spice circuit. So as I told you before that we have the multi-pin uh, uh, lumped element, we can now add what we, what we call the touchstone and spice circuit. So again, if you are running your simulation where you have a lot of the, um, you know, uh, distributed devices such as capacitor, resistors, etc., what you can do is that you can place some lumped element directly inside the 3D design and you can attribute or you can assign um, a spice uh, file, for example, or a touchstone file of a capacitor of another circuit of a diode, what you, what you want. And you can run the simulation only on the 3D. So like this, you can actually see the, radi the, the radiated field uh, effect on the device and vice versa, of course. Okay, now still talking about the frequency domain solver. As you know, in CST, we have what we call the voxels. And the voxels are mainly used when you want to import a human body with all the tissues inside the simulation. But what you need to know that inside CST now, you have a, um, a human body called Nelly. And this human body is meshable with tetrahedrals as well. So you can run some frequency domain simulation, consider a human body in order to calculate the SAR or in order to calculate, I don't know, the exposure to, to the field, etc. You also have this new feature when you uh, when you have the uh, bioelectromagnetic bundle of CST, you can have what we call the poser. So imagine if you want to place a, a human body inside the car, you cannot place the human body standing still. It has to be seated like this. So the poser allows you to do this. So you can here design your uh, the, the, the position of your body 
and then this position you can apply it on the human body designs that we have inside CSD. So for those who knows Hugo, which is the human body that is here, which is here, we just uh, designed the, the poser and then attribute it to Hugo, and then you can import Hugo in this position. And there you go. I mean, you have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, of scenarios. For example, we have also another uh, macro that it's a pity it's not presented here. Uh, we have a human body which is meshable in tetrahedral uh, domain and this human body it has a breathing sequence because imagine when you take some uh, deep breath or where you are breathing the quantity of the air inside your uh, inside your body is different and this could this can affect actually the electromagnetic performance of the device and of course you have the co2 uh, density and a lot of bio biological stuff that changes when you are breathing in or breathing out and this can be taken into consideration okay this resumes until now the high-tech industry and the antenna and engineering certification so now i'm going to pass to another ipe another industry purchase uh, experience which is called the connected vehicle communication performance so uh, as i told you from the beginning when you uh, when you design an antenna uh, for example, here we are talking about the communication, and when you hear the word communication, it rhymes with antenna every time. Uh, so now we are talking about a little bit uh, a bigger design. So we are, we are not talking about devices now uh, in high tech, we are talking about cars, and cars are bigger usually. Uh, so imagine that we want to uh, simulate the performance of an antenna placed on a vehicle. The question that you would like to ask yourself are, where to place the antenna and will the antenna be still operating once placed on the top of the car or inside the car or anything uh, anywhere else of course you have to ask yourself how the antenna should be should look uh, here is, okay so we are not talking about integrated antennas inside devices uh, and since we are still we are talking about uh, you know bigger stuff here we are we can think about 3d antennas like this blade antenna you can see here uh, or the shark fin antenna, it's not the blade one. And of course, you have to ask yourself, as I told you, where to place the antenna and how it will operate once it's placed inside the uh, or on the top of the car, for example. Here. So now I'm gonna go back to our uh, solver uh, scheme in here. As I told you, one of the uh, constraint uh, that pushes you to choose one solver uh, instead of the other is the electrical size. You know, just before I've spoken about the wideband behavior of the antenna. Here we are speaking about the electrical, electrical size of your uh, design. So here in our case, uh, we are dealing with two stuff. We are dealing uh, with the antenna itself, and we are also dealing about the simulation with the antenna on the top of the car. So in our case here, the best solver to use are the time domain solver and the I solver. The I solver is the integral solver of CST and it uses the method of moments. So now you can ask me how you can use two solvers. It's only one design. So actually what you can do in CST, we call this the hybrid simulation. So I'm gonna tell you about the hybrid simulation. Um, in a nutshell, I'm gonna show you an example just after. But in a nutshell, the hybrid simulation means that you can run the, the simulation of the antenna using a solver like this time domain solver. And then you can use another uh, solver, for example, the integral equation solver to simulate the antenna placed on the top of the car. Because as you can see here, the integral solver allows to simulate bigger sizes of devices. You can go up to 1000 Lambda. Uh, so speaking also about antennas for cars, you can see here what we have, uh, the windscreen antenna. Uh, you know the windscreen antenna, which is also the resistor that removes the fog from your back uh, shield. So this is the antenna which is integrated inside the glass, and we have some compact model that allows you to model this antenna easily. We call this conformal strip from curves. So this, your antenna here in the beginning is designed as a curve, and then you can apply this option to transform the curve into a strip antenna, and then you can calculate, you can run the simulation uh, classically using I solver or time domain solver or whatever. Okay, 
So if you want to run the simulation using the time domain solver, it's the time that I show you what are the benefits of the time domain solver. So first of all, we have the perfect boundary approximation. Uh, this is important because this is the intellectual property of TST, and this is what makes our uh, the force or the power of the time domain solver. So in a nutshell, what's a PBA? The PBA allows you to uh, consider a mesh cell with more than one material. The classic time domain methods, uh, which are, for example, the FDTD, it would allow you only to consider one material per mesh. However, since in CST we can consider more than one uh, material, uh, for example, if you can take here the sphere, you can see that we can keep the curved aspect of this element, for example. However, if you take and to consider, uh, if you if you consider FD a classic FDTD method. If you want to mesh the sphere, you can here, uh, you can, by the edges, you can have what we call the staircase mesh. Well, this is not, uh, this is not the case in SAS AST. Uh, the meshing, of course, it's exahedral, but it's very robust and you can mesh whatever you want. You just import the model as complex as it gets and you mesh it like in no time. Uh, it's possible actually to, uh, uh, but just before I told you, you know, about running big simulation with the eye solver, you know, big devices with the eye solver. However, in time domain, you can still run a simulation of large models. However, you have to use what we call the GPU acceleration. You know, this GPU acceleration allows you to run very, very big models in, uh, in while reducing the simulation time. And of course, this is what I told you about the hybrid solution are available for larger simulation because sometimes, uh, as I can show, as I'm going to show you just after, even if you have acceleration, you cannot run the simulation using the time domain solver. So you have to look for other stuff like the hybrid simulation with the I solver or the A solver, of course. Okay, so now for those who deal with the with automotive uh, market. Uh, we can now in CST import what we call the Nastran and the AVH mesh. Uh, what I mean by here, for example, instead of uh, importing a complex CAD model and you want to mesh it with CST, you can directly, uh, sorry, you can directly import the mesh and run the simulation quickly without getting into the meshing uh, of the structure. Since you are imported mesh, I mean. Uh, we have also this next gen PBA meshing technique, uh, which is even more robust because it can it can detect more details of your uh, of your uh, of your structure. Uh, especially, for example, here in our what I'm showing you, you have an antenna placed on a car, and the antenna is really really detailed. So you can see here how this PBA detects the the um, what we call that uh, detects the details of the antenna and it applies the refinement on the antenna only as you can see in here okay so since i've told you about the time domain and how it uh, how it's available with the um, uh, acceleration techniques uh, we have a new gpu devices which are supported now which are the tesla volta 100 and the quadro g volta 100 uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, numbers about the acceleration that you can get, uh, you can see here that the Tesla V100 is the last one, so it's the most performant. Uh, you can get up to 10 times of acceleration. This is really important. Just to give you an example, imagine if your simulation takes 10 days to be uh, to be simulated, you can get you can reduce this time up to one day. And the 10 hours be, be becomes one hour, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, some kind of acceleration technique is called the distributed computing. For example, imagine that you want to run a simulation with a lot of ports. Uh, you, you have a lot of ports uh, of excitation ports. What you can do is that you can distribute the, those simulation on four different computers. And basically, when you want to get the results back, you have to merge all the results together that are simulated on the four computer. So what we have done in CST 2020 is the improvement of this merge time in order to get back your results to your, uh, to your computer. Okay, now I'm gonna pass to the last IPE that I would like to show you. And here we are speaking about the ADAS, AV sensors performance. So uh, just a quick word on this uh, IPE. You know, nowadays uh, the cars, 
are not actually transformed from gasoline or uh, or benzene cars to electric cars but we are also considering you know autonomous cars uh, cars with a very high safety and when you speak about very high safety we take into consideration the ADAS and the ADAS it stands for advanced driving assistant and safety uh, so when you design a car you know you have on the front and even on the back and sometimes uh, you know on each side of the car you have sensors and the sensors allows you to do a lot of stuff uh, they can be they can help you with parking your car they can help you with detecting objects on the street they can help you with the autonomous driving for example the sensor can detect the car in front of you and it can change its direction so really you have a lot a lot of stuff to do with the sensors now one of the things you have to deal with is the simulations of course uh why we are speaking about simulation because as i told you once again when you simulate when you want to simulate for example the performance of your adas or, or the performance of your sensors integrated inside the car you do not only take into consideration your car but you have to take into consideration your object you want to detect for example now uh, in this um in this scenario here i'm i have i'm i, I am having my car that is here with the antenna and then 10 meters away oops sorry 10 meters away you have another car so how would you like to simulate this type of antenna of course you have no solution except the hybrid simulation so as you can see you can simulate the antenna with the time domain solver you can place the near fields of your antenna as you can see here on the car to the left you can see that the antenna is represented by its near field source and then you can use for uh, the eye solver to run this big big domain simulation and you can see here on the top the results that you can get you can actually see the radiated field from your car on the next car so this is huge uh, i mean in the matter of simulation so now if you want more complex we can give you more complex as i told you before the most important stuff in new cars is the adas or the sensor that you can place here and now as you can see as you know uh, or if you do not know uh, the frequency the operating frequency of this uh, sensor is 77 gigahertz so it's really high in frequency and if you want to compare your car size to the wavelength at 77 gigahertz it's like 10,000 or even more so here we are getting really bigger and bigger domains to be simulated but of course, since we have the um, hybrid simulation, this is no problem at all. Uh, for example, a type of, uh, of uh, sensor is an array, antenna array. So I'm gonna go into the array just in a second. But what you can do for here is you can run the simulation of the antenna array using time domain or frequency domain if you want. And you can place, as I told you, the near field source inside your car and you can run the simulation of the antenna integrated inside your car using the I solver or the A solver. So the I solver I've told you about, but the A solver, what is it? Actually, it's a solver that allows you to run simulation using the shooting and bouncing technique. So it's only ray tracing. So this will allow you to simulate structure which can go up to 100 thousands of lambda. So you have no limits. Okay. Um, so here the size of the antenna alone you see uh, we have an array of patches and the size of the antenna alone is 113 lambdas uh, this is the biggest dimension so the scenario here of course is to run the simulation of the antenna and the antenna you have to integrate it into a steel uh, support like you can see here you can have some plastics of course inside the car so you can run the antenna using the time domain solver and again you can integrate the near field source of the antenna inside your car and run with another solver now speaking about array i will allow myself to speak a little bit about the array test that we have in cst the array test as its name as its name says uh, it's a task that will allow you to run antenna array simulation in in in, uh, in a nutshell however what you can do instead of running the simulation of your big big array imagine that you have an array i don't know with uh, 200 uh, or 400 or even 1000 elements you can run the simulation using the time domain solver mgpu technique however there is another technique which is really important it will allow you to design your antenna it will allow, it will allow you also to distribute the amplitude on the phases of your antenna 
of your uh, antennas, of course, in, inside your uh, array. And what you can do is you can run the simulation of only one element. But when you run this element, when you run the simulation of this element, you can consider the coupling between the uh, between the um, uh, between your uh, your device between your uh, unit cell antenna and the other of the array, and you can consider this coupling with using these uh, boundary condition called the unit cell boundary condition. So basically, this will allow you to consider to calculate the uh, what we call the active impedance of your antenna. It means the active impedance means how is your how is your uh, antenna is matched when it's placed inside the array, but, but you can also calculate what we call the uh, the active pattern, the active element pattern, which means that it will show you how your antenna will radiate when you are considering severing pointing angles, because the array, you know, when we speak about an array, you can form the uh, the the lobe, the radiating lobe, you can form it in the broad side, but you can also sweep uh, the, the the direction of your uh, of your radiation. So, anyways, how to calculate how CST uh, interpret this uh, scenario? You can calculate using the simulation of only one element and using the unit cell boundary condition. You can have this radiating element, the active radiating uh, pattern, and then there is an option in CST called the array factor. So what you can do is that you can describe your array inside your array factor, whether your array is a, a circular like this or it's rectangular like this one, as you want. And what CSD does is that it multiplies the active element pattern by the array factor and you can obtain the final radiation pattern of uh, your uh, array. However, there's only one drawback of this method, which is the edges uh, effect. With this scenario, you cannot take into consideration with the, the edges effect, okay? But inside CST 2020 now, we have introduced another option which allow you to simulate big antennas uh, or big array antennas, which call the simulation by group. I will explain myself in, in, uh, in this picture. So when you have an array like this one, we can apply what we call the simulation by group. For example, in this case scenario, in this scenario here, you have, uh, I think you have up to nine groups, all right? So you have the inside groups, which is the group one. You have the group two, the three, uh, four, five, and you have the corners, six, seven, eight, and nine. What this means? It means that CST, instead of running all, this, all the, 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 the patches or all the antennas, it will simulate only nine times, nine antennas, and each antennas is uh, you know, uh, the environment of each antenna is different. For example, if you take the group one, it means that your unit cell, your considered unit cell, is uh, surrounded by nine antennas, like this, or uh, sorry, by eight antennas. And of course, the number six, the group number six, is also in a different configuration, etc. So here you can divide the groups, and what you can obtain actually is the radiation pattern of each group. Uh, for example, the antennas which are inside group one, they will have their radiation pattern. The antennas inside group two, they will have their own radiation pattern, as you can see here. And finally, what you can do is that you can apply an array factor, of course, because you have here the group one, they will all have the same radiation pattern, the group three as well, the group two, etc., etc. And finally, you can combine all those radiation together in order to obtain your element. So in this example here, I'm showing you the simulation of the full array. So we have done a time domain simulation of the real finite array, and we have compared this to the simulation by group, and the result, I mean, the comparison is excellent. And the speed up factor that you can get, for example, from nine port, uh, the comparison we have done is between a uh, full array with 64 ports and a full array with the group excitation. So we reduced the simulation instead of simulation 64 times, we have run only simulation of nine groups, so nine times. So the factors you can get is actually up to six, uh, seven times. And of course, if you're, uh, the more your array is big, the more accurate the results you can obtain. And finally, I will take the opportunity to speak since we are still in aircraft communication detecting system performance. So now I'm just, I'm gonna 
uh, I'm gonna jump from car domain to airplane domains. So one of the important elements inside the uh, aircraft communication and detection system is the interference, as I told you. So once again, on the airplanes or on drones, like the one you can see here, we have a lot of antennas operating in, you know, in different scenarios, in different frequency bands. And we do not, we cannot eliminate the risk of those antennas interfering without simulation. So once again, when you, uh, when you jump to even a bigger scenarios like simulation, simulation of antennas on airplanes or satellites or anything like this, now we are talking about the I solver and the A solver because we are also, we are going forward with the electrical size. So the integral equation solver, uh, if I want to speak a little bit about it, so as I told you, it's the method of moment. It's a surface mesh where you can uh, mesh only the surface. And of course, it's, uh, it's also compatible with the NVS mesh uh, import. Uh, you can import surface mesh, that's no problem. You can uh, consider simultaneous excitation. If you have, for example, as I told you, if you want to do a, a hybrid simulation, you can simulate your antenna uh, with a time domain solver, for example, and then place the near field source on your structure and then run the final structure with the eye solver. Uh, you can consider in your antenna the intersection, as you can see here, the, uh, the field source in, uh, is intersecting with the structure, but this is no problem. And here you can see the radiation pattern of the patch antenna on your structure. So you can see here the, uh, the ripples that uh, the structure is producing. And the, ma the main uh, topic of this, uh, of this domain here, of this uh, simulation, is the interference test. So as I told you, this, these are ones of the, you know, of the application that, um, and the antennas that you can find on the drone. So you have the VHF, you have the TACAN, you have the GPS, you have the IFF, the DME. All of those uh, antennas are operating in different uh, frequency bands. However, even though they have different frequency bands, uh, one antenna could interfere with another antenna, even though they are not operating on the same frequency. However, the harmonics of one antenna can interfere with the baseband of another antenna. So this is the, the importance of, of the interference task. So what it does is you can run the simulation using the hybrid solver, using time domain only. I mean, you can run a classic simulation using whatever kind of uh, scenario you have in order to obtain the S matrix of those antennas. You have a lot of antennas, even if you have seven antennas, you will get an S seven by seven matrix. And what you can do, you can import this S matrix inside the interference task of CSG. And by the way, the interference task is already included by default inside CSG. So what you can do in a nutshell, you can use those S parameters to uh, get this violation matrix here. So it can show you which system interferes with which system. Just an example here, you can see that the GSM 900 is interfering with the DME lower band in the receiving. So the transmitter of the GSM 900 interferes with the receivers, with the receiver of the DME. You see, so here you can see what kind of stuff you know. You can change the position of the DLA antenna. You can change the position of the GSM antenna. This is it. Uh, so, of course, inside CST 2020, we have a new schematic editor, which is more convenient or more, uh, let's say, uh, user-friendly, okay? Uh, there you go. Uh, so, as I told you, uh, just to give you a little bit of a summary, we have seen how CST connect with the 3D experience and how it will allow you to collaborate with other uh, colleagues. We have seen the encrypted models. We have seen the imported master and AVI mesh support. And of course, the hybrid solver, which is also very, very important when you consider uh, big, uh, big simulations. So thank you very much for your time. This ends my presentation. Uh, thank you, Hassan. Now I, I will pass the, the word to Milad. Thank you, Milad. Uh, thank you for the informative presentation. Now, for the next few minutes, we're more than happy to take your questions. Uh, please type your questions, whether they're technical or general, in the chat box on the right side, and we'll respond to you promptly. Uh, also, Hassan, if you can go back to the very first slide where uh, the email is shown. Uh, yes, of course. Now, if any uh, attendant 
wish to, wishes to know about the potential use on a specific industry related or an application related of uh, such simulations, please email us at uh, contact at launchtech.ae, which is the email shown right here. Feel free to capture the screen or type the email. Uh, we're very responsive on this email and we'll be happy to respond to any inquiry you might have. And if you guys would like to see uh, a demonstration, uh, we have uh, went through the time, but it's good because I've shown you the uh, what I wanted to show you in the demonstration. If you remember, I have shown you this and the first and the very first video. So if you would like to go more into details about the uh, this uh, workflow, I will be, uh, I mean, of course, Milad will let me know and we'll be more than happy to show you this in details. Okay, I think uh, we have two questions to answer right now. Okay. Uh, one from Neha, the question is how simulation time using hardware acceleration? Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, using hardware acceleration, it depends on uh, what the kind of uh, GPU you are using. Um, uh, if you are using a Tesla K80, if you are using a Tesla V100, etc. So, uh, first of all, you have to know that the acceleration is can be used uh, via, I mean, the acceleration via GPUs can be used with time domain, with uh, uh, integral uh, solver, and with the asymptotic solver. And uh, basically, you have to have uh, inside your computer, you have to have the GPU, and in your license, you have to have the GPU acceleration token, or what we call the acceleration token simply. And the results you will get, I've had it here somewhere. I will give you an example, okay? Uh, about the GPU simulation. Uh, okay, it's not in here. I'm just sorry, I have to see. <laughs> There you go. So you can see here for each scenario, uh, so why the simulation time changes or the acceleration changes from solver to solver or from topic to topic? Because for example, here you can see that the acceleration time is very well appreciated for PCB simulations. Why is that? Because in PCB simulation, you only have um, what we call, uh, you know, um, transmissions because you want to see the transmission of the signal. This is why it, uh, the, the simulation generally is faster than, for example, simulating an antenna where you have some resonance phenomenon. But as you can see, if I use, for example, the Tesla V100, comparing on the same computer, okay, we are talking about simulation on the same computer, uh, between simulating using the GPU and without using the GPU, we have a speed up factor of six. And for PCB design, you can have an acceleration factor up to 10 times, you know, which means that you can reduce the simulation times by 10. So that's it. Mm. Thanks, Hassan. I think uh, we do not have any more questions. Hamad says, thank you for the great presentation, well organized and very informative presentation. Thanks, thank Hamad. You. Uh, thank you, Hassan. Uh, please feel free to drop us any uh, questions at contact contact at launchtech.ae and this marks the end of uh, our presentation. Thank you all for, for your interest and for listening and uh, until next time, goodbye. Thank you guys, bye-bye.